calling all green-fingered gurus and plant killers alike. We got you covered every month with gardening inspiration, hands-on practical advice and fun projects to do. From the latest in plant fashion, growing your own, whether to prune or not to prune, from cover to cover, The Gardener and Detainee magazines have got your back. Get your copy now or subscribe online at thegardener.co.za. Gardening with Tanya is proudly brought to you by plantland.co.za for quality plants and all things gardening. Gardena, realize your gardening dreams. And tanyafisser.com for all your gardening goodies and supplies. Morning everybody, it's Thursday 11 o'clock. I've got gooseys and we are ready to rock and roll. Um, guys, it's been quite an eventful last two weeks. Um, highs, extreme highs and extreme lows. Um, whew. But I'm going to tell you about that a little bit later because it's really got to do so importantly with our topic today, which is frost hardy plants. You know, South Africa is so big, wide, diverse. We've got people who don't even know what a jersey is in winter who live in some parts of our country. Um, we've got others that really need to get tucked up fires going, heaters going, um, and that's them, never mind the plants. So we, we really are going to touch on, on, it's something that, um, that gardeners always ask. It's a question that comes up a lot, especially if you're in those areas, because obviously if you're buying a plant, you're investing in something. You're investing in it, much like a relationship, much like your home. Um, you're investing in that, so you want to make sure that it's going to grow, do well and prosper. Um, but first of all, guys, let's see who's online. Um, I saw it was going mad a few minutes ago. I was still running around the garden and then I was called to come back inside. So, you know, that happens. But anyway, guys, Tamara's here. Good morning. Um, Elka, good morning from Lakeside. Kathy from Coxstad. Marina Swanepoel. Sharon Partington from Boxburg. Um, Dorothy Davy, good morning. Annaline Peters, good morning, good morning. Um, Jill's online, Maureen is online. Wendy Waghorn, good morning. Um, Helen J. Jack, I like that, Helen J. Jack. That could be like Helen J. Jack. See you later. Yeah, I like that one. Mary, uh, Maja is from Balkan, and Balkan is somewhere in Russia, was that right? It's Eastern Europe. We, we, um, we Googled it because I'm like, a kenny a balcony. There's a there's a balcon. What a balcon? That's a balcony. Balkan. I didn't know where that was from, so we had to Google it. Um, but Maja, welcome to Facebook Live. Um, Judy is here. Good morning. Thea is here from Glen Vista in Joburg. Um, let's see who else is here. Uh, Rosaline from Swakopmund. Oh, I've always wanted to go there. I really always wanted to go there. We were planning a trip, and then something happened possibly COVID. Anyway, I really would like to go there and I believe you've got some really amazing garden centers. Um, so yeah, yes. Yeah, we'll have to keep that, put that, keep that on the bucket list. Um, who else is here? Let's have a look here. Um, no, I was on that thing already and let's go up there. Gail is here from East London. Um, no, you don't have much winter down there, um, Gail. No, you don't, but you still have to put on a little jumper, don't you? Yes, a little jumper. Um, and from PE, um, uh, Marche, what are you saying? Watching the show live for the first time today. Oh, welcome, welcome, and congratulations. Welcome, welcome. Um, Taryn is here from Kempton Park. Uh, Jackie Cunningham from Scotland. <laughs> oh, haggis, haggis, and black pudding. Oh, yummy, yum. Black pudding is from Scotland, isn't it? Is black pudding from Scotland? 
shoulders. Oh, I love it. I know it's terrible, but oh, those moors, oh, and lupins growing wild and and foxgloves just in those glades. Um, oh, oh, beautiful. Just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, guys, um, we've got an action-packed morning. Um, oh, oh, Gabby, Gabby, Gabby. Shh, we're going to say this. Shh, shh. Uh, she's home officing today. Gabby, Gabby, I won't give away um, your surname, but it is double-barreled, but you're home officing, and I'm very glad that you're doing some educational information for one hour. Uh, <laughs> um, Lebanon, good morning from Soweto. Wonderful to have you with us. Um, Felicity from Gnubi, beautiful little town. Wild woman down there. Um, how do I know that? Because of a ladies' evening that I had to do down in East London. And let me tell you, can you ladies know how to party? Yes. Right. No more about that. Because what happens in East London stays in East London. Right. Um, Gabby. Yes, Gabby. Uh, Renesha. Renesha from Escombi. Good morning, guys. It's wonderful to have you all with us. Um, so... This week's Dirty Spade. Now, you know what the Dirty Spade is? It's where you've got to send us your videos. You've got to tell us what you've been doing in the garden. This one was specifically on bulbs that we asked you to send in to us so we could see what you were up to um, after watching the live and learning about bulbs and not being so scared of them. Um, and we had some wonderful, wonderful entries. Um, so guys, without further ado, here is the Dirty Spade. Okay, I'm still jamming. I hope you're still jamming. Dirty spade. Dirty spade. Anyway, okay, okay, right. Today's runner up, guys. Today's runner up, and this was very hard, and you had me watching over and watching over and watching over again and trying to work it out and trying to work it out. But uh, okay, this week's runner up goes to drum roll. Jill Mika, congratulations. Let's see what you sent in. Right, so I'm getting ready to plant some garlic, uh, garlic bulbs, and I have got some bone meal, some bio ocean. There are my lovely garlic cloves, and some compost, and some Epsom salts, and uh, no, not mayonnaise, that is lime. Right, I've put the compost on, and now I'm going to come and sprinkle the lime. Just a little bit. We do have fairly acidic soil as we live on a farm in the Midlands and uh, lots of pine trees around. And then a couple of handfuls of bone meal. And last but not least, a couple of shakes of uh, Epsom salts. And then right at the end, I will add in the by our ocean as well. Garlic is a fairly heavy feeder, so you do need to add a bit to the soil. And then I will probably use start grow once uh, the roots are up. Right, so I've dug over this end of the bed, uh, fork deep, and I'm now going to just pour out my garlics and space them and then push them down about five centimeters or so and then cover them up and press them in give them a good watering i've lined them all up and i'm going to plant them so that they're slightly offset which means i can fit more in here and uh, here's my big beautiful cat his name is fat boy he's come to join us to help me plant the garlic so when you put it in the ground you'll see the pointy end there the pointy end pointing up and the flat end which is the base so that's where the roots are going to come out so all you're going to do is push it into the ground and press down once you've planted it and i'm going to do that with all of these there's probably about 55 uh, cloves here so i definitely won't be buying garlic next season or next year here we have it i've planted them 
pressed the earth down so they're all snug in their new beds and we'll see how that goes and of course over there I've got some asparagus and I'm obviously just waiting for them to brown off and I'm going to pull them out and dress that bed and there comes beautiful cat to uh, see what's going on on the video. Jill, congratulations and well done. I thought you did it beautifully. Um, and the fact that you're planting garlic, um, it's one of those that I know you generally, a lot of folks don't do it, but well done to you because homegrown garlic tastes better. It actually tastes like garlic. Yes. Never, ever, 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 ever buy those garlic things in the tubs. Do you know why? Because most of it is filled with potato bits and maybe a little garlic essence and like this much garlic. True story. So if you're going to, first prize is grow your own. Second prize is buy some. Okay, really not. Actually, that's like 10th on the list, 100th on the list. Buy it. Um, but guys, grow your own. It's a long crop. But once you harvest it, once the leaves start dying down, um, because it is a very, very long crop, once they start dying down and you harvest it, you hang it, you can keep it for months and months and months and months on end. Um, hang it in a cool, airy place, much like our garage here, um, and, and it does a perfect job. Now, I saw a question coming through. And Jill, I'm telling you, you did it perfectly. You did the, um, the Atlantic Bio Ocean. Whoop, whoop. Fantastic. Good, good, good slow release, yes, because they are greedy feeders. Garlic needs a lot to bulk up as a bulb. Um, you put the bone meal in, you had put compost in, fantastic. You planted them right, you showed us the top to bottom. But the one thing, the one thing was the Epsom salts. Okay, now there's this big thing about Epsom salts, guys, and and, and here's, here's the lowdown, and, and I'm not going to go on and on and on about it, although I probably am not going to be able to stop myself from going on and on and on about it, but this is the lowdown. If Epsom salts were so good for our garden, do you not think garden centers would sell it in 25 kg bags for us to buy? Think about it. Right, you've got the answer. Very, very small amounts can be added very small amounts but it is not necessary when you are using products like bio ocean when you are using multi grow when you are using nutri feed you do not need to oh bahari's coming to say hello it's okay don't chase bahari out um, you, you you really don't need to add it because all it's giving is a little bit of micronutrients and your micronutrients are there if you are using the products that we recommend to you. Also, what it does have the ability to do in Epsom salts is alter your pH. Okay, and that's where things start going wrong, especially if you're adding too much. So please, rather not, um, but Jill, a good job, an amazing job. Um, but today our, our winner, guys, goes to... You have entered so many times, so many times, and today you are the winner, Zahara Sadek. Well done. Hi, Tanya. Hi, gardeners. Hope you all are doing well this winter. Um, it's lovely, bright and sunny day here in Durban. Um, I've managed to get my bulbs. Uh, they're not that many. But um, anyhow, that's what I could get my hands on. It's my first time planting bulbs, so I'm quite excited about that. I've got some uh, bulb food as well, and I've got some uh, flowers that I'm going to be planting in between them. Um, I'm going to take all the advice uh, that I've gotten from Tanya, and hopefully it goes well. I will keep you guys updated. Have a wonderful week. Stay warm. Sahara, good job. You chose anemones. Um, I hope you planted them claw down. Remember, those are the ones that you plant with their claws facing down. Um, and I'm sure that you are going to have beautiful, beautiful color. You use the bulb food, which you sprinkled on top and watered in. Fantastic job. But guys, this one, this week's Dirty Spade really had me, it had me in, a, in, in what we call, an, uh, we have a lovely word in our household, and it's called um, a, a tustant. It had me in a two stunt, um, and a two stunt 
Um, if you don't know what that is, it means when you're like all betwixt and between and you just don't know what to do. So, so I've made a call, like I made it like two minutes before we went live and I said, right, for today's live, guys, Jill, you are also a winner. Jill, you also get a first prize because I thought you did it beautifully. And Sahara, you still are also, see, we've got joint first princesses or queens. What are they? Princesses. First princesses, two first princesses of the garden, um, Sahara and, um, and Jill, and you both win a 650 rand gift voucher to my online shop, tanyafissa.com. Um, so congratulations, guys, and please keep up the gardening. You're doing an amazing job. Okay. Um, uh, oh, oh, Tanya says, Tanya Vesma says, don't worry, I'm the same. As soon as someone mentions Epsom salts, I cringe. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, Jill. Oh, Jill, you're here. Jill, totally agree about homegrown garlic tasting a thousand times better. Thanks for including my video. I'll skip the eggs and south salts from now on. Oh, mwah, mwah, mwah. thank you, thank you. Hallelujah, amen. Jesu, right. Okay, guys, so let me tell you about the week that was. Um, sure, it says being, there, there were, when I talk about highs and I, and I talk about lows, um, on last Friday was my, my birthday, um, and I, 7th of May, and I was so beautifully spoilt. Um, thank you to all of you for your wonderful messages, your love, your kindness, your warmth. I could feel the hugs and love. Um, I, I cried lots on Friday reading your messages. Um, I smiled lots and I laughed lots. Um, and I, I was truly, truly blessed. Um, my, my office staff gave me a birthday party with cake, some special mirror glazed five layer fridge frozen, what was it? Uh, chocolate cake. It was insane, insane. And there was fridge tart and there were flings, my favorite chippies. Um, and, uh, and, and, and no alcohol, juices and, and, and balloons and flower arrangements. It was so amazing. Um, I think that they did put something on, on Facebook, um, but thank you uh, to my Lone Hill family. You really did spoil me terribly. Um, and I got an impact drill for my birthday and I'm so excited and I can't wait to use it. And of course it's cordless, it's battery operated. Um, and so very excited. Uh, my staff were also really, really, um, I don't know what they were doing, if they were like, like giving me a little reality check about, um, about uh, how old I am. But uh, they, they put a video up, um, they made a video for me of when I started TV, which was many, many moons ago. Um, from the days when we started our first TV program up to season 19. Um, which they repeating at the moment, I think. Um, so it's a uh, Tanya aging through the years, and uh, guys, it uh, oh, it was beautiful. Um, scroll back down on the Facebook feed, and um, and if you missed it, you'll be able to take a look at it. You'll have a good laugh as well. Trust me, and you'll die. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you will do that. I know you will. But anyway, um, Saturday arrived. Beautiful day in the garden. It was a lovely sunset right over the sea. Um, we were watching the beautiful colors and geez, we were all commenting like, wow, beautiful colors. And it was far away. The sky changed and um, moved and things moved around um, to the higher side of, of Elveston. And we saw uh, there was a bit of lightning and a bit of thunder. And we thought, OK, well, a bit of rain is coming. This is so, so out of season. And then we were inside starting with dinner and I heard kunk, kunk, kunk. And those were a few hailstones on the tin roof. So we ran outside, bearing in mind that our garden is due to be open in four weeks' time for the Kloof Conservancy Open Garden. And we've, we've really been paying special attention and tried a whole lot of new things in garden combinations and plant combinations. And, um, and the hailstones got bigger and bigger. And I said, if, if they stay small like this, the garden will cope. The garden will cope. And then the heavens opened and it came down in the most horrific, horrific deluge. Um, <laughs> I have never, in the 28 years I've been living in the highway area, I have never, ever experienced this. Um, it was literally a kilometre wide. 
this band that came up through our valley and it took everything out. Um, our garden obviously is quite exposed um, on the banks. And uh, I'll show you some, um, some, of, the, some of the fatalities. Uh, this, this was an arum lily. Um, some of them literally just have their stalks left. That, that was an arum lily. The salvias are just sticks. Um, you can see obviously the succulents took a major pummeling. Um, uh, some of the aloes, the aloe ferox, in fact, you know how thick those leaves are? It went straight through the leaves, like I stood there with a shotgun and blasted it. Um, there was just leaves in the front garden. On, um, on Sunday morning, we literally removed 12 bags just in the front garden, 12 bags of leaves. Just, it was just shattered, shattered. Um, I, I actually, I, I didn't know where to start. I cried, I howled. I did more crying and howling. And um, the point is that this happens. It happens. It's the first time it's happened to me. I know it's happened to you folks. And I also do know that frost fits in the same category. Um, it does because it comes along, it sneaks up on you, takes it out, and there is no forgiving. There isn't. Um, plants were smashed um, and frost does very, very similar things. But I have to say, we've always got to find the silver lining. We have to, we have to. Um, yeah, I was, I was very Deborah depressed, um, still am a little, have my kind of down days whenever I walk out into the front garden. We've been pruning, we've been spraying, we've been doing preventative. So, so hail damage, what do you do with hail damage? First thing is for the first 72 hours, you do nothing. You stand and look and weep and go through the mourning process, okay? And then you can start you could have, we started picking up the leaves on Sunday, but you don't touch anything, you don't prune anything. Once you see where the damage has been, you then start doing very light pruning to those damaged leaves. And then you spray, because things have been battered. They've got holes in them. It's much like cuts. Like when we have a cut, we've got to clean the wound. We've got to put a dressing on it. So what we did was we gave everything a very, very good spray with Disease Pro. We use Disease Pro because it's for powdery mildew and fungal infections. And you know when you've got a cut, that is the first thing that's going to happen. It's going to get infected. So we gave everything because this, of course, can be used on edibles. It won't affect the birds coming into the garden. It won't affect the dogs. So we use this across the garden. We gave everything a very, very good spraying. And what we did was we mixed um, the Disease Pro with some Multigrow. So everything got put into one tank and literally sprayed the entire garden because this is going to be a good pepper upper, you know, okay, let's get going, wake up now. The thing about hail is that there is so much nitrogen in the soil now. There is, this is more nitrogen that you can ever, ever think or dream of putting into your garden. So we're waiting with bated breath. We've had a few hot days. Um, we're in full gardening cleanup. Um, we've had to go and blow the budget a bit on a few new plants, uh, but the show must go on. We, we're going to make a plan, as every gardener does. Um, as they say, a burmaka plan, and, and that's the way we go. Um, but the same, exactly with that, is how we experience many things in life. We go through that shock, mourning, anger, like... Really? God, big God, did you have to send it in this one kilometer radius? I mean, I know it's very mean, but you know, like, come on, come on. Anyway, guys, um, I've got a lot of great friends out there, um, really amazing people. And for those of you who did hear about the, the, the terrible, terrible destruction um, in the garden, uh, one of them are these guys. And um, this parcel arrived um, at my office um, a day ago. And... Uh, all wrapped up. I did, I did open it up because I wanted the plants to breathe. Um, and it's got this cute little sticker on it. Um, and I thought, well, I never ordered anything. Like, I haven't done any, any like, okay. And then I thought, well, let me go check it out. So it came from these guys. Plant Lunt Garden Centers. If you live in the Pretoria area, you'll know them. They're normally on a corner. They're those big, amazing garden centers where you go in and plants jump onto your trolley. You, 
<gasps> have you also experienced it? <laughs> I know, I, I know, you're like, I only have one, and you turn around and you look back at your trolley, and there's seven, eight, nine on the trolley. And it's like, gotta have this, gotta have this, gotta have this. Um, plant Plant Garden Centres, guys, if you live up in Pretoria, anywhere in Gauteng, you are blessed. You are like, I am so jealous because you have got beautiful plants grown by a third, it's a fourth generation. One, two, three, four, fourth. Fourth generation family. Fourth generation family business headed up by Jimmy Milan, who is an absolute darling, a lover of plants, a lover of plants. And him and I can talk plants forever. And they sent me this beautiful gift box. And imagine that. Plants from Pretoria arriving in KwaZulu-Natal. Ha! Online gardening. And that's what's happened, eh? You can order anything. Any, anything from anywhere. And it'll arrive. And they arrived looking amazing. So, have a look here. I'm actually going to put this down here. So, um, Mace, you can come and have a look inside the box. So, they're neatly, snugly wrapped. Um, let's take them out. Ooh. I've never seen this guy. Ooh. Okay. Okay. All right, and here's another guy. Funny that. Ah, oh, look at you guys. Look at that. Oh, and these. Oh, and I got some seeds. Oh, I also got some seeds. Um, hi, Tanya. I hope you enjoy your first, your frost hardy plants. Um, may they make your garden smile every day. Love from Plant Lunt. Aw, aw. And you know what you plant radish with, hey? You sow radish with carrots, okay? Sow your radish with your carrot seed because your radish germinate, mature quicker. You pull them out and harvest them, obviously, to eat them on a piece of white bread with a thick layer of butter and thinly sliced radish and a little bit of salt. That's how you eat radish. And then your carrots have space to expand and grow. That's how you do it. <gasps> but let's talk about the plants. Oh, man. And look, they, they packed all nicely in with this shredded stuff over here. So they're not going to go anywhere. Guys, that, there we go. It came via Korea guy. Okay, so they came all the way from Pretoria um, and arrived in my office in KwaZulu-Natal. So whether you're in Cape Town, whether you're in Joburg, whether you're in Porfida, wherever you are, you can order online plants. And that's the world has become a village. It's kind of become like a cliche, but it really is that. So let's look at the plants because I know these are all frost hardy. You can grow them where it gets minus, 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 minus. So let's quickly talk. <gasps> Do you know I've always wanted one of these? Okay, but I'm going to leave this till last because it is... Sure, I'm getting so excited. I'm, I'm, I need to drink something. <laughs> mm. Oh my gosh. Okay, so guys, this plant here, um, this is an abelia. Now, we all know the abelia. We know abelias. They, they used to get the green one, which was kind of quite, quite common. And then we got the golden variety. And now this one is called lemon and lime. And you can see it's starting to show that color already because as it gets colder, so it goes more golden. This entire shrub is going to be just beautifully golden. In pots, it works amazingly. It's lovely. Um, hedges, topiary, so you can prune it really nice and easily pruned. It gets about a meter and a half by about a meter wide, so you can put it as a mid shrub as well. Uh, pots and containers, brilliant, and hedging. But this, it shines. It, uh, lemon and lime, it just shines all the time because. It doesn't lose that beautiful golden glow um, and the fact that it is frost hardy ticks all the boxes it really really does beautiful shrub I think you're going to go into a container I've got a container in the front garden which has an ordinary abelia in it so that abelia is going to go to uh, the compost heap in the sky maybe I'll plant it somewhere else but anyway that's abelia okay now this guy now ooh, so I've read about this plant but I've never seen it. Okay, now some of you are thinking, oh, I've seen this plant, I know what it is. No, 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 no. Take a step back, boys and girls, because look here. Do you see those little white bits? Do you see those? The plant's not dying. Oh, no, 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 no. This is normal. Isn't that insane? It's like a variegation on this beautiful gold crest, which 
they have called snow crest. So this is Cupressus snow crest. We all know the, grow, the, the, the gold crest. So this is like its cousin on steroids. Um, snow crest, I love these little white flecks. I love it. It's almost like snow, ding, ding, ding. I can see it in a pot. I can see it with some beautiful yellow pansies or some dark pink pansies around it. I can see it in the garden beds, deep in the garden beds, because it'll get to about two, two and a half meters by about 90 centimeters wide. So if you've got small garden space and you're wanting some height, beautiful plant to use, great in containers. But the best part about snow crest is this. When you rub it, oh man, I wish you could smell it, I really, this is lemon, is lemon, it's citrus. This gold, gold crest, this snow crest is a lemony, lemony fragrance. So if you crush it, oh, it's like, um, it's like one of those bath salts that you get or whatever from, <laughs> for Christmas or whatever. <laughs> But, but much better. <laughs> this is, you know, soap on a rope and those things. I know, but this is really nice because this is fresh, fragrant. It's so yummy. It actually, actually it's making my, um, my saliva glands go a bit wacky um, because it's crisp, it's clean, it's fresh, it's gorgeous. So this is called Snow Crest. And you, I know that me and my other half are going to fight over this plant. But never mind. For now, I'm just putting it over here. So, okay, but the best till last. Guys, I've always wanted one of these. Um, and uh, because of Plant Lunch Online, they sent it to me. Um, this is called Loropetalum. Now, some of you have never seen this plant before, and I get it. Have a look there. This is called Loropetalum. It comes from China, East Asia. Um, Loropetalum, it, uh, Loropetalum, it gets its name from um, lorem, which means um, sheath or straps, and petalum meaning flowers, okay, because it is full of these bright pink, raspberry colored, strap-like, beautifully flowers. Look at that. And this guy flowers on and off throughout the year, Laura Petalum. So it's, um, it's got a, a it's, it's always got this plum foliage. And in fact, very interesting, this plant originates from China, but this particular variety was bred in Australia. Okay, so let's think about it. Australia, similar climate to South Africa. So how well is this guy going to do? Perfect. All right, they've got the same conditions where it gets from really cold to exceptionally hot. And Laura Petalum will do with this beautiful raspberry foliage that does turn slightly green in the summer. But this variety, Plum Gorgeous, stays more red throughout the year. It flowers on and off. It gets to about one and a half meters by two meters wide. So very graceful, very, very graceful. And in pots, it's beautiful. So in fact, well, you know what? I've just answered my gardening questions, I, I, my, my problem. So Laura Petalum is going to go in the one pot. Um, and if you do come to visit the open gardens, you'll get to be able to see it. Um, I'm going to put Laura Petalum in there because it's a great container plant. And I'm going to put my lemon and lime over here. And maybe, maybe, um, I will put you over here. Oh, no, I'm getting signals. Um, she's already taken the plant. You know, you'll just have to send me another one, plant lunch. Buy a donkey. Donkey yellow. Ek, ek vraag om verskoening. Um, guys, that's it from plant lunch. And, and that's, that's the amazing thing, is you can get amazing quality plants delivered without being knocked over, fallen over, pulled out there. I mean, these plants arrive better than some of the plants that arrive when they go in the back of my boot. Um, when I'm in a hurry to get home. Uh, so well done, Plant Lunt guys and, uh, and the team. And, and I've always been a big, big fan of your plants, um, purely because you try things that are different um, and you introduce beautiful new plants to us gardeners in South Africa. And there you have it. So there you go. There you go. Um, yeah, a boer maka plan. We always maka plan. Um, oh, what? A boer maka plan? But a porter makes two plans. <laughs> oh, you kill me, Sophia. You absolutely kill me. Uh, <laughs> okay. Right, guys. So those are frost hardy. Now let's talk a little bit further about what plants are frost hardy. Um, because it's a question we get so, so often. Now, um, 
I'm going to show you one or two plants over here. Mace, come along and, and litter. So we showed you those beautiful three plants. These incredibly frost hardy. This is a beautiful camellia. Oh, lovely fragrance. Camellia, Sasanqua camellia. Sasanquas have the smaller flowers, more open flowers. Um, incredibly tough. I mean, you can go to minus, 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 and these plants, they can snow on them and they will still remain evergreen. By the way, Laura Petalum, I forgot to tell you. There it is. There it is. Fragrant. Sweetly, sweetly scented. Oh, okay, okay. But anyway, anyway, let's go back to the camellia. Camellias, um, I love sasanquas. So you get reticulatas and you get sasanquas. Sasanquas generally have a smaller leaf. Um, reticulatas have a bigger leaf. Um, these guys flower earlier um, and your reticulatas flower in deep winter. So imagine going into a garden where it's icy, icy cold, icy cold, even snow. And guess what's flowering? Camellias. Ha! Can you tree it? Absolutely true. Okay, down here, other plants. And this, whether you've got a large garden or a small garden, there is one for you. And these are beautiful azaleas. Um, this little guy over here, uh, what is its name? I don't even know what its name is. Rose Queen. There we go. Um, this is Rose Queen from our local garden center. Guys, beautiful double flowers, nice and small. It's a kurumi, and a kurumi means smaller leaves. Okay, um, Japanese as well. These can be used in pots, they can be used deep in the garden, beds, and we all know the magenta azalea, which gets huge, huge. Oh, and don't be scared to prune that magenta azalea as well if it gets out of hand. When do you prune it? Directly after flowering, which is in spring. But you're saying, but Tonya, this is not spring, and this thing has got flowers. That's because your best flowers, your truest flowers, you'll always have some in the late autumn, early winter. You always get one or two azalea flowers. Um, I love them. I love them for pots um, and semi-shade or in the full sun. So there's some options as well. Now, in terms of color in the garden, what can you use for color? Guys, your options are also endless. And look at this. <laughs> look at this baby. This is a beautiful ornamental kale. It's a cabbage, okay? It's a cabbage. You probably could eat it. Yes, you can because it's part of the um, brassica family. But uh, this is meant for, for the garden beds to look beautiful. So you can either buy these in little punnets um, or you can buy them as plants like this, which will grow like a normal cabbage, except they don't get a head. These will just open up, open up. The colder it becomes, the more white shows. The frostier it becomes, the more white shows. They will never frost. They will look gorgeous and you let it go right through its growing cycle. You know, like a cabbage grows, uh, if you don't pick it, then it's going to shoot, it's going to bolt and it's going to send up its seeds because it is a type of veg, so it's going to make seeds. Let it get to that point where it's actually flowering because it gets these beautiful panicles, tall spikes of yellow flowers that the bees go gaga of. It's like cocaine, baby. They're in there, they love it, they love it, they love it. Um, so let them flower because they're beautiful. So <coughs> ornamental kale, don't eat it. Don't eat it, it's very bitter. How do I know? Hmm. Hmm. Okay, um, you also get it in a pink. You get it in a lovely pink, but I prefer the whites. And so hence the hail damage. Oh my goodness, yes, uh, lots of kale is going to be going into the garden in different patches where it, things got smashed, okay. What else can we, and I've often asked this question, Tanya, what can I plant in the veggie garden that is going to be frost hardy? And folks, don't stress, there are things that you can use. So remember we spoke about the brassica family, all the brassicas, so cabbage, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, can cope with all the frost that you get very, very easily, okay? Celery, tough, 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 incredibly frost hardy um, and lovely to eat. Oh, celery. I love celery. Celery and a little bit of, um, oh, what's that stuff called that we like eating? Cream cheese. Mm, mm. Celery and cream cheese. <gasps> oh, oh, dipped in a bit of salt. Yummy. Okay, so I've got some tzatzoi here. 20 minutes left, caramba. Okay, um, I've got some tzatzoi and pak choy. So what are these? These are the Chinese greens. 
and they might look quite soft. These are the ones that you use for stir fries. You can put them in salads. <coughs> Excuse me, I've got a frog. You can also um, eat the flowers. The flowers are also edible. So if you have been picking, 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 and you let it go and it makes the flowers, the flowers are also edible. But although this actually looks quite soft, it is incredibly frost hardy. So this is the pak choy and the tsatsoi, which is the flatter, open-leafed one. Um, you can also have. Now remember, all of these guys, you can sow by seed. Okay, and I'm going to touch on that in a second for those of you that are in frost, um, heart, in, in frost areas that receive frost. But the next thing I want to show you is lettuce. Yes, you can grow lettuce. You can grow lettuce. You can grow them in pots. You can grow them in the ground if, if you do the following. Okay, so these are not so frost hardy. They will take light frost, but heavy frost lettuce will simply just turn into pulp. Okay, just literally into pulp. So what do you do, guys? There are various ways that you can protect your plants, and this is one that you have to do. So you want to get some of this. It's called Frost Guard. Now, guys, you should all have, if you live in a frost area, you should all have some of this um, in your garden tool shed. Um, and this is it here. It's the soft, very, very... Um, almost like candy flossy type fabric and what you do is no this is not my new shawl that I'm going to be using this is, oh, hold on, how do I look no no okay right uh, this is not a new shawl what you do is if you've planted your lettuce in the ground okay you take this you can cut it up um, and all that you do is and one of the easiest ways that we do it is this let me show you okay so Let's pretend that that is growing in the ground, in the garden, okay? You would then take a few sticks, you would put, put a few sticks in, in the soil, and you would simply just drape the frost cover over it, okay, like that. Now, the good thing about frost cover is that, say, you're having to leave early for work, you're in a hurry, and you don't have time to take it off, don't stress. The plants can still photosynthesize straight through this frost cover. It's quite amazing. Yeah, they can stay on there. It can stay on that right through until there are no signs of the frost. How do we know when frost is there? Cool, clear evenings, clear, clear skies. Be careful, because the next morning, Jack Frost is coming. If you do get heavy frost, folks, get out there and put the sprinkler on. Water, if you see the frost, to help melt it as soon as you get sunrise, because that's when a lot of the damage takes place. So you can leave this frost cover on, the entire time, or you can just take it off like that. If you're in an area that gets lots of wind and you've put it over a shrub, um, and I'm gonna just do this here quickly because I wanna show you something else. If you're in an area that gets um, lots of wind, what we normally do is this, and it also works like a charm, is take your frost cover, get some soft wire, okay? Just get a bit of frost wire, soft, soft wire, bend it over like that, Okay, there we go. Make a little U-shape. Take your frost cover, pop it over the plant because it can touch the whole plant. Don't worry, it doesn't have to be off the plant. It can be draped over the plant like this. And then on the edges, you just push this into the soil like that. Okay, got it there. Push it in, there it goes, and that will hold your frost cover in place. Nice and easy, okay? Plants like coleus, like this guy over here. <sighs> Folks, very, very frost tender. Very, very frost tender. Generally, your thick, fleshy, leafy plants are going to really get clupped if you don't cover them. So make sure that you do cover them up. And as I said, remember, you can leave it there the entire winter. This looks like my coleus is getting married, and this is her train. Doesn't she look beautiful? Okay, but anyway, I did have a thought. I did have a thought because I have changed my mind while talking to you that I'm actually going to take my Laura Petalin and I'm going to have that near my coleus. Oh, sexy, baby. It's going to look gorgeous. Okay, okay. I'm getting way off. off. I'm getting far too distracted now. Anyway, let's move this along here. Um, guys, 
what I want to show you, we had a question about how do I look after my succulents, okay? And it's exactly the same way that I showed you. Take the little sticks, pop them into your pots, okay? And then just cover them with the frost cover. Nice and easy, okay? Remember plants that are like if you've got lettuce um, in small pots, remember you can take them and put them into a more frost protected area. And we're going to show you something, some other nice hints and tips that are going to help you with frost protection. Guys, watch this video and learn because it's going to give you some tips besides what I've told you on how to deal when Jack Frost comes to visit. Well, there you have it, folks. So many different options that you can adopt in your garden to make sure that you, your garden is staying safe. All right, now, the other thing I'm always asked is, can I still sow seeds? Can I can't sow any seeds because it's cold? It's winter. Absolute rot, rot, nonsense. Finished. Terrible. Hello, Bahari child. The child's come to visit. Bahari, say hello. Come say hello to everybody. Come say hello, smile. Hello, Bahari. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Bahari, smile. Hello. <laughs> Don't you love this dog? Smile, Baba. Smile. 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 Yeah. <laughs> you are too much. You are too much. Oh, my word. Okay, okay. Back to, go <laughs> Back to gardening. Guys, you can sow seeds. You absolutely can, especially if you have one of these little propagators. Now, you might think, oh, but Tanya, they're so expensive. But no, they're not. Um, get online, go into our online shop, grab yourself a propagator, because once you've got one and you look after it, you've got it for a long, 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 long time. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so what we did here is we sowed some cauliflower. This is a wallaby cauliflower. Um, 
because if you raise it, remember when you watch the video, if you raise it above the floor, okay, plus you've got it in a little propagator that's going to keep it nice and warm and snug, it's going to germinate. So your seed is going to germinate. Folks, remember, we spoke about what you can sow now because of the cold. So cabbages, easy. Peas, incredibly frost hardy, incredibly. Cauliflower, kale, yes. Spinach, beetroot. The list goes on and on and on forever. Guys, of course you can, and there's no reason why you should be. And Bahari kissed my glasses, and I can't see anything except blur. So, um, they, oh, that's better, that's better. So you can actually sow them. Um, I had a question, um, I think it was from one of the previous lives, was that how do you, how do you get them out of here without breaking them? Um, when you need to transplant them onto a little pot. And I'm going to show you very, very quickly, folks, because it is very easy. Um, so from this stage, when we say, when we get to the, the, the two leaves, so there's two leaves with another two coming through. This is the time when you need to transplant them into little containers, okay? Best into little containers. Um, because if you transplant now straight into the garden, you are going to lose some. You really, really will. So we go from this size, we go into here. So what we use is um, a seedling mix. It's a nice, fine seedling mix. And what we add to the seedling mix is a handful, with this amount, a handful of Atlantic Bioganic for lawns. Interesting. You're using something for lawns. Yes, because this is a very good all-rounded fertilizer. It's also got quite a high nitrogen. It's made of chicken litter, um, composted chicken litter. It's going to do the job. And why? I love it because it's in a crumble. So in a crumble, when I mix it in here, okay, it's going to get mixed very, very well. Okay, it's going to get distributed in amongst this. Um, and especially because I'm putting into little containers like this. I can't go using big large pelletalized fertilizer. Okay, does that make sense? Right, so all we do is we pop into here, okay, level it off, nice and easy. This is one of the most therapeutic things you can ever, ever do. And this is why I say to people, guys, only sow a few seeds. Because if I have to count you, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, Okay, that's about there. So that means I've got 50 cabbage seedlings. It means I've got to plant there 50 out here. Hi, caramba. Okay, I might be there for a while. So only sow small amounts at a time, or else you're going to end up with forests of cabbages. Okay, so how do you prick them out? Let's show you very, very quickly. The label. And this is the way I like doing it. Your label that you used. Okay, there it is. Comes to a point. It's got multi-uses, guys. So what you do is, um, Mace, are you in close here? You're going to grab this little guy, and I'm going to try and work this way. You're going to grab him by his stem, okay? You're going to pop this little pointed bit in, pop it in, and just, just wiggle it a bit. Just move it, move it, move it, and there out he comes. Okay, nice and easy. Out comes this little guy. There he is. There's my little seedling. Beautiful looking gorgeous, white healthy roots. Why? Because we used, we planted it in a beautiful um, palm peat. We make a little hole over here. We pop that little guy in. We use the same little um, tea marker, uh, our little uh, plant label. And there he is, one down. Next one. Open him up, pop him in. Okay, there we go. And you know, if we had to try and get in here, with any other tool, we are probably going to destroy something, break something off. So you just pop it in gently, try and handle it as less as possible. Um, that's always important because then you get them ready for their next stage. So the, these little guys, you would leave them in the same conditions as these, which is a well-lit area. For the next two weeks, you can then move them out into a more brighter light area. Once you've done that, um, you can then plant them directly out into the garden. And remember, with these little pots, which are made from recycled cardboard, you can plant the whole thing in the garden. Pow! So there's no transplant stress or anything. Last thing that these guys need is a little water. Um, 
and folks, when you are watering them, um, you're going to need to water quite often. What I would recommend very, very strongly is that you add some start grow into it. Remember, start grow is for your initial stages, getting good root development. Um, you can use it on your seeds as well. Once you've sown your seeds, use it. It's a capful into five liters of water. It's dead simple. It's dead easy to use, and um, it's a good stress reliever for plants. Especially, you want good roots to get your good, healthy foliage. So there we go. Uh, First three little cabbages transplanted and ready to go. Okay, guys, cauliflower, beg your pardon. So here we go now. So what if, what if things do get damaged by frost? What do you do? Number one, do not remove anything. Do not remove the leaves. Do not try and prune them away until the end of the season, until there is no sign of frost damage. Because if you take that off, any of that foliage, and you get clapped by another frost, guys, it's going to burn further down into the plant. So please, rather be patient, step back, because that actually helps as a little protection. If plants are damaged, and we can look at trees like this, I've just strapped up some trees onto my studio here with some cable ties, because, you know, cable ties can fix any problem. Um, but I want to show you a new gardening gadget that we were sent to trial, and I've been playing with it in the last two days, and... Guys, guys, this is going to turn your life upside down. In fact, I do feel sorry for some of your plants because they're going to try and pick up their roots and run away. Because if you do get hold of one of these, um, one of these slim cut pruning loppers from Gardena, you are going to want to cut everything. I haven't tried it on here yet, but uh, stay tuned. Okay, so this is the baby, guys. This is my Gardena slim cut pruner. And... I, I've never seen anything like this. I, I truly have never seen anything like it. Um, it is just over a meter long. Um, it's got this handle, which is really quite comfy. So this is your handle, which can move. You see that? The handle can move. Um, if it's not long enough for me to get to somewhere, all you do is you just turn this. Look at that. You just turn. How clever is that? I mean, they, they're so smart. Why don't I think of that? Okay, so you can just turn that to get to get whatever your, your right height is. Okay, let's talk about the blade. It works on a gear ratio. So it's got two gear ratios um, that are set over here. That's for your um, easier cutting, thinner branches, and that setting over there is for your thicker ones. So the one the thicker one gives you a 1 in 12 gear ratio. This setting over here gives you a 1 in 6 gear ratio. What does that all mean? Bottom line is, it's easier for you. You're not having to like, e -e 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 -e. you know, as my mother used to say, don't strain a fuffy valve while you're doing that. And it'll stop you having to do that. So uh, these are ground um, blades, precision, sharp. They're also coated, which means that um, they're not going to get glue and gum stuck on them. And the best part about this of all is that it's got aluminium handle and it's going to make pruning so much easier and I want to demonstrate this to you and I'm going to compare it to a traditional product because this is where it shines. Yes, we get it. You can do this. Look here, you hold there. Okay, and when you pull this, ah, look what happens. Do you see? Mace, check this part out here. So there we go. We pull and then it closes. Okay, so I will hold it there. Can you focus on there? So when you pull this guy, there we go. It closes it and, and cuts. So that's on your one gear ratio. Here's on your other gear ratio, watch. There we go, much stronger. I can feel it actually is much, much harder to pull. And that would be for your thicker guys. So let's take a look. Come up here, oh, this is gonna be fun. Pop it on so even if it's in the neighbor's garden, I'm sure you can still reach it. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, so there we go and pull. Timber, love it, ha <laughs> ha. That was so easy. So, what does that mean? No step ladder, no trying to get up there, no tying myself to the tree in case I fall down, no dogs trying to climb up the step ladder to get to mom, no chance of falling off the step ladder, highly likely. Um, and I can get to anywhere. Take a look here. Thinner ones, move it over to our easier setting. Um, I mean, this is like child's play. This is wonderful. So, pruning made easy. God, these guys are so smart. Come, Mace, let's pull this one down. Oh, look at that. Ooh, fantastic. Oh, I could just prune all day. 
this is made really, really. Don't worry about the equipment. The crew is getting very stressed about where the branches are falling. But I want to show you the best part about this. Mace, I need you to come around here because I'm going to compare it to a traditional lopper. Okay, so guys, this is your traditional lop lopper. We all know this guy, and it's used for thicker branches. Yeah, we get that. Okay, most of us have got one of these. But I want to show you where this tool comes in. So if I had to go into a large shrub, so let's pretend that this is, is really big. Of course, I couldn't bring a large shrub into the studio, but here's a beautiful magnolia. Um, and you wanted to prune out some of the, and thin the shrub out, like you would do if you're not getting enough foliage in there, if you wanted to do rejuvenative pruning. I saw a question there about an azalea that's not flowering, hasn't flowered for two years, it needs some Atlantic bio-ocean. It needs um, some multi-grow or some nutrisol or even some kelp. But guys, you need to give it a good pruning. So if I took a lopper and I wanted to get in here, look, look what happens. What am I going to cut? At this stage, I'm going to cut all three. One, two, three. Okay, you, you see it's difficult to get in there. Okay, you see that? It's difficult. And you're going to hurt some of the, the, the bark. And you can see it's difficult. And I'm not pretending here. This is, this is going to be a challenge. Or else I've got to go there. And then it's going to be really hard because I'm having, I'm not using the best part of the lopper. When you're cutting, it should be in there. Really, really in. You see, you need to get that guy tucked in there because then you don't have to use so much force. Okay, so if I stay there, Mace, if I had to use this guy, now watch here. Watch when I go in. Oh, look at that. Look at that. I could take that branch off with absolute ease. I could be even more selective and I could go in here. Look at that. Nice and easy. So that's the difference, guys. Look at that. Made simple. And I'm not going to prune my magnolia because it's just lost its foliage and it's now putting on its beautiful buds um, getting ready for its spring show. But this is the guy. Weighs 1.2 kgs. Um, it's going to stay in my garden. Gardena team, you are not getting it back, I'm afraid to say. Um, it's staying right here. Uh, and uh, it, it works. It works like an absolute charm. So I'm very excited to get pruning. And um, there you have it. They call it Ergotech. It's the Gardena pruning loppers, guys. Um, and uh, yeah. Haha, <laughs> I can't wait to get out to the real big, big trees. Okay, guys, let's make sure that you know what's up on your weekend schedule. So here are your jobs for the weekend. Well, there you go, guys. Lots for you to do this weekend. Plus, get your frost cover. Plus, get your pruning tools. Plus, order your plants online. Whoa, busy, busy. Plus, get your gardening magazine. The latest copy of The Gardener is on shelf. It's got the most beautiful, sexiest gazania that you have ever seen. It's their time now. They look amazing in gardens over the winter. Even if you get frost, guys, yes, they cope. Um, the garden or detainee, look out for this most amazing, beautiful cover. Um, you can still get your Grow to Eat, which gives you everything you need to know about edibles in your garden. And we also show you how to cook with them. And also look out for Let's Bry magazine, because that's the wrong one. There it is. For Let's Bry, thank goodness I can see what I'm actually doing. <laughs> Uh, because a chop and dop just isn't the same without Let's Bry and Cormans Bry. Um, guys, a huge shout out to Gardena, Plant Lunt online store um, for your support today. Thank you um, and uh, a big shout out to you. Remember, we'll answer all your questions. We promise all of them shortly after we've wrapped up here on the live. Um, take care of yourselves. Thank you so much for your love and support. Um, God bless you all. And most importantly, as always, Happy gardening. Gardening with Tanya was proudly brought to you by plantland.co.za for quality plants and all things gardening. Gardena, realize your gardening dreams. And tanyafisa.com, 
for all your gardening goodies and supplies. Calling all green-fingered gurus and plant killers alike. We got you covered every month with gardening inspiration, hands-on practical advice and fun projects to do. From the latest in plant fashion, growing your own, whether to prune or not to prune, from cover to cover, The Gardener and Detainee magazines have got your back. Get your copy now or subscribe online at thegardener.co.za.